Revolution brings you the Chardon Hilltoppers and the Ironmen of Cleveland Central Catholic in the 1986 Geauga County High School football season opener. The last time these two teams met in 1985, the game really boiled down to the offensive efforts of these two men. Number 31 for Cleveland Central Catholic, Randy Ramsey, and number 33 for the Hilltoppers, Jim Mopanerny. Ramsey, an explosive runner, gave the stubborn Hilltop defense all they could handle last year. His quick first off tackle like this win often led to big plays. In short, he did it all. Good news for Chardon, Ramsey graduated. But the Ironmen figure out another quick back to fill number 31 shoes, and that man is Damon Cross, number 26. Only a junior, he can hurt you in a hurry. The Hilltoppers, Jim Mopenerny. Well, he's no slouch by any stretch of the imagination. With his slashing upright style of running, O'Penerney has to set the speed around the corners and can break a long one at any time. He's exciting to watch. You'll see him a lot tonight.
Okay. Hmm? Alright, we're ready. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cablevision's coverage of 1986 CVC football. Tonight, in tonight's ball game, we will bring you the game between the Chardon Hilltoppers and the Ironmen of Cleveland Central Catholic. I'm Joe Scarola. I'll call the play-by-play -play, along with John Walsh, our color man this evening. Tonight's game is brought to you by Junction Auto Sales, automotive service professionals in Geauga County since 1933. Destination Travel, your ticket away this fall. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, the fun place to stay in shape. And by Century 21 on the Square Realty, put number one to work for you. Well, we're going to have the starting lineups coming on here, and right now for some uh, pregame talk, let's turn it over to John Walsh. John? Well, tonight, Joe, it should be a very interesting game. We have two teams that have, from when they met last year at about this time, have totally different personnel on the field. Graduation last year changed the lineups quite a bit. We have contrasting styles also. At quarterback, the two teams are led by George Zero for Central Catholic, a senior experienced quarterback. Chardon is led by Howard Joyner, a sophomore in his first varsity appearance today. At running backs, uh, Central Catholic is basing everything, replacing Randy Ramsey, a tailback, with Damon Cross, who should be their big gun there. Also in his first varsity start, while Chardon is led out of the backfield by Jim O'Patterny, an experienced and one of the best backs to come out of the CVC last year. Chardon will be kicking off the defending North Bowl tonight. The starting lineups defensively for Chardon are at the end positions, Mike Neely, Bill Henderson. Tackle positions will be manned by Scott Urquhart, Rob Pascavich. His nose will be held down by Ed Zaletsky. Two cornerbacks starting are Ken Fox and Bob Vincicuera. At the linebacker positions will be Dave Scanlon and John Perko. At safety position will be Fred Kyle, and at monster back will be Jeff Flyma. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. These are two unknowns. Joe, I'll turn it back to you. We're getting ready for the start. Okay, we're just about all set to go. Plenty of action here tonight. Of course, last year's ball game, Chardon won it by a score of 20 to 18. This year, who knows what will unfold. Anyway, we'll be back with the opening kickoff after this timeout. Hello, I'm Warren Babcock. Things have changed since 1931 when my dad and granddad started selling Chrysler products. Junction Auto and Joga County have changed also, and our cars have changed tremendously. Hi, I'm Ed Babcock. One thing has not changed. Our commitment to give you the best deal and the best possible service is as strong now as ever. As we start our 55th year, please meet the people who work hard with pride to handle all of your car needs. Parts are 15,000 factory authorized and high performance parts. Service, our award-winning service department is waiting to serve you. Body Shop, we hope you don't, but if you do, our Body Shop can make it new. Salesmen, our courteous and professional salesmen will help you make the right choice. Office, on the phones and behind the scenes, our office staff pulls it all together. Most importantly, we want to thank you, our customers, for helping us grow. You're number one. Thank you. Thank you. Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers still ring proud and true and are congruent with the progress of the present. 
walk along its granite-girdled coast and enjoy its quiet fishing villages. New England. Taste its vitality and revel in its peace. Well, we're all set for the opening kickoff. It'll be Chuck Straczynski trying to fill the shoes of Dale Backus, kicking off for Chardon. Deep to receive for Cleveland Central Catholic. We only have one man deep there, and that is Vernon, uh, Bentley. Vernon Bentley, number 34. And we have a few up men there, but Vernon Bentley, the only deep man, and he's going to get the ball, and it's going to go over his head, roll into the end zone, roll through the end zone, and out. And it'll be a touchback for Cleveland Central Catholic. They'll take over the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice kick by Suzinski. He didn't get it too high in the air, but he really boomed it. Uh, went down to the goal line, which is very, very good for a high school kicker. Uh, Suzinski did the kick in last year behind Backus and uh, got a few occasions when Dale came up short and did a good job in those times. And seems to be going to be handling the chores. I'm not sure about the punting. If he's going to be the punter, we'll see that as that unfolds. Hey, wide to the left comes Grudzinski, and George Zero gives the ball to Damon Cross, I believe that is. Yes, it was Damon Cross, and Damon Cross picks up about a yard to the 21-yard line. Thrown down after a gain of one. It'll be second and nine for Central Catholic at the Central Catholic 21. Yeah, that was Ed Zielinski coming from the nose tackle position, a player that Coach Doyle is hoping will solidify his defense this year. Served the same function Lou Philby did, and I have a mention on that after this play. Kermis comes wide to the left, tight to the right is Ed Rogowski. Zero to throw, rolling far to his right. He's going to be trapped in the backfield and thrown out of bounds for a loss. At about the 18, we'll call it a loss of three. In on the stop, Rob Pascavage, a man who John Walsh was talking about in the pregame show there. Of course, we talked about everybody who started. So it's a loss of three. It'll be third and 12 for Central Catholic at the Central Catholic 18. Yeah, that was very good penetration by Chardon, who's not too big up front, but they have a lot of speed and all. The mention I want to make before was uh, Zaletsky last year was an all-league defensive end. The year before that, Lou Philby was. Their senior year, they end up at the nose position. They capitalize on strength and quickness. Third and 12, the give is to cross on the draw and didn't fool anybody. Damon Cross is knocked down right as he reaches the line of scrimmage by Dave Scanlon, number 35. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth and 12, and Central Catholic will be forced to punt. Yeah, I tell you, the uh, Chardon defense right now looks good. And uh, with the inexperience at the offensive line positions and at the quarterback position with the sophomore starting, the defense has got to be tough early to keep them until experience can help out offensively. Troy Edge, number seven, will do the punting for Central Catholic. He gets a good snap. It's a high, short kick coming in under it and making a fair catch for Chardon is Bob Sotka, and he makes the fair catch at the 45-yard line. We'll be back in just a minute after this timeout. 10.39 to play in the first quarter. Central Catholic nothing, Chardon nothing. The Century 21 on the square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 on the square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 on the square realty today. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club. It's the only place in town where workouts are fun. Join our aerobics and dance classes. Play racquetball with a friend or in a league on your choice of eight thermostatically controlled courts. At Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, our trained staff will guide you through Nautilus and isokinetic exercise equipment and will develop a personalized toning and conditioning program just for you. Don't have the time to get a conventional tan? Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club invites you to experience our private tanning center. It's the quick 
convenient way towards looking your best. And mom and dad bring the young ones along. While you're relaxing after a workout in our comfortable lounge area, your child is receiving the best care in our supervised nursery. Coming soon to the Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club is an indoor pool for year-round swimming. So join our new swim club and the rest of our facilities before September 30th and save $100 off the regular membership rates. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, the fun way to stay in shape. Chardon with the football, first and ten. Let's call it the 45-yard line of the Hilltoppers. And the give is to Jim O'Patterney. And O'Patterney is across the 40 and down to the 37-yard line, picking up right where he left off last year, maybe even a little better there. Second down and two at the 37-yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you, Jim hit the hole real quick and had a nice little lane open up off the tackle and in position by Martin. Oh, excuse me, Mike Neely and Todd Lee. Very good blocking up front for this young offensive line. Second down, two yards to go, and the give this time goes to Lynn. He's across the 35. Mike Lynn down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line, tackled there by Mark Gallo, the captain of Cleveland Central Catholic, number 32, a gain of four, and Chardon has the first first down of the ball game. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers at the 33-yard line of Central Catholic. That's some good running by Mike on that. Uh, the hole was plugged up. He slid off to the side, found a little gap there, and got a couple yards out of it, which is great running. Double tight ends, Wachab on the left, Sotka on the right. The give is to O'Patterney, sweeping the right side down to the 30-yard line, thrown down right there at the 30 by a horde of Central Catholic tacklers, chief among them number 71, Rick Mitchell, the tackle. A gain of about four yards. It'll be second down and six at the 31-yard line. That just showed the experience of Jim O'Patterney in that play. As he went, there was a player shooting into the backfield. He did a little hesitation step to cut around him, and it was just real, real nice experience running by O'Patterney. Second and six at the 31. Once again, tight to the left is uh, Sotka. Tight to the right is Wachab. The give is to Mike Lynn, finds the hole, gets across the 30, down close to the 26. Stopped there by number 10, John Duda, and also went on the play, number 51, John Nowak. Gain of three, it'll be third and three for Chardon at the 27-yard line of Central Catholic. Well, so far, I really like the play calling of Coach Doyle. He's got the young sophomore quarterback. Let him get his feet wet a little bit with simple handoffs. Nothing fancy, no option plays. It's just a good way to build confidence up in a young quarterback. The Chardon offensive line has been very impressive here in the early going. Third, actually, we'll call it third and four now. Here's the give to O'Patterney. Across the 25, close to the 24, he will not have the first down. He was tripped up right in the backfield by Big Lamont Bentley, six foot two and 260 pounds. And he's gonna come up about two yards short of the first down. It'll be fourth and two from the 25 for start. I agree with you, Joe. Big Lamont is a good description of somebody that meets those statistics. 260 pounds and uh, he takes up a lot of space in the field and obviously can do more than just take up space. Chardon's gonna go for it on fourth and two. In the backfield, once again, O'Patterney left the give is to Mike Lynn, and Lynn is hitting the backfield, cut down right at the line of scrimmage. Number 26, Damon Cross, came right in to make the play, and it'll be a turnover. The ball will go over on downs, and it'll be first and 10 for Central Catholic at the Central Catholic 25-yard line. The defense stiffening after that initial burst. Yeah, it looked like there was a little problem. It appeared to be Chardon's little option play the outside where you fake it to the fullback, the quarterback keeps it, rolls around in. They seem to get the arms tangled up together and all, and I seriously think uh, quarterback Jordan wanted to keep on that play. Here's the pitch to Damon Cross. Cross tripped up in the backfield and thrown down right as he reaches the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the play. The tackle was made by Ed Seletsky. I'll give him credit for that, although I think they're giving a credit to somebody else down there. It looked to me like Ed Seletsky made the stop. And it'll be a holding penalty. It will have a holding penalty against Cleveland Central Catholic. And that will knock the Ironman back 10 yards. If Chardon decides to take the penalty, if they take the play, it'll be second and a long 10. Yeah, I think it was defensive end uh, Mike Neely who did it. <coughs> Excuse me, a good job of containment on that. 
The turn to play to the inside where the tackle could be made by Zaletsky. Real nice defensive play work on that play. We're moving back quite a bit. Well, they're going to take that 10-yard penalty. Sure. It's moving back to the 15-yard line. It'll be first and 20 for Central Catholic right there. That's a good way. Put them in a hole, plus it's moving them more towards the goal line you want to cross. I'd definitely take a penalty in that case, too. That's kind of nice. We've ran in, what, three, two series of uh, downs already, and uh, first penalty that occurred. That shows well-coached teams stay away from the stupid little mental mistakes, which normally do occur early in the year. Good, crisp, clean football, especially for this point of the season, and zero. Fires it right over the middle to his tight end, Ed Rogowski. Rogowski gets across the 25 out to about the 28-yard line. He picked up 13 yards on that play. It'll be second and seven. John, not the kind of play you want to have if you're on defense and you've got a first and 20 for that offensive team. Yeah, that's a good, nice little play, though. A quick hitter. You get the freeze or the fake in there, which freezes the linebackers. And that's what you got to do. That's in the little deep over the middle zone the linebackers should be dropping on. Once you freeze them, you can get out there quick and you got to play, which shows right there. And Ed Rogowski ran the pattern perfectly and was right there. There's the pitch to Gallo. Gallo turns the corner across the 30 out to about the 33 yard line. Run out of bounds there by a number of Chardon players. Chief among them, number 35, Dave Scanlon. It'll be third down and about three yards to go for Central Catholic. Yeah, I tell you, Ed Zaletsky at nose is reminded of Lou Philby last year, the way he was just quick in the backfield. As uh, quarterback Zero was making the handoff, Zaletsky was right at his knees and uh, just a hair earlier, and it would have been a quarterback sack. Nice quickness from that nose position by Ed Zaletsky. Third down and three for Central Catholic at the 32-yard line. Zero. Rolling on the option across the 35, 40, 45, midfield. He might go all the way, 40, 35, 30, still running down the sideline, and he is going to be in for the touchdown. A beautiful option run by George Zero, who takes it 67 yards for a score, and Central Catholic is on the board with 6.05 to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, that was a pretty little option play they had there, and uh, like you said, it was just the right choice by... Uh, quarterback zero and keeping it because the lane was opened up the end they had to move over to take care of the the other back trailing there and it just opened up the lane he made the most of it broke one tackle after he got about five yards downfield and six points as a result good quickness too by quarterback zero what you say joe well you know we really liked what we saw of him last year and he has done nothing to disappoint us here yeah. this evening Greg Antoon will attempt the extra point for Central Catholic. Troy Edge to hold. The ball is down. The kick is up, and it is good. So the extra point is good with six minutes and five seconds to play here in the first quarter. It is Central Catholic 7, Chardon nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. The Century 21 on the square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 on the Square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 on the Square Realty today. Okay, Jeff Palima, Jim O'Patterny, and Mike Lynn, a triumvirate deep to receive this kickoff from Tim Murray of Central Catholic. And it's a short kick. One of the up men is going to wind up with it. And I can't pick up. Oh, okay, the, it's Dave Scanlon. And Dave Scanlon breaks out of the pack across the sideline. And he's finally forced out of bounds around the 47-yard line. The kicker, Murray, ran him out. And a good field position for Chardon. They have the ball almost all the way up to midfield. Yeah, two things in that. One, it was a fine return by Dave Scanlon. Normally, you don't see. He seems to have real good speed on getting. You don't normally see that in an up man. Another thing, isn't that somewhat reminiscent of last year, Mr. Watula's kicking? That seems to be... Central Catholic puts out good football teams. They seem to have problems in the kicking department. So we'll see how that goes. Al Watula was a great player, but a lousy place kicker. And in fact, his poor kicking cost Central Catholic that game last year. Mike Lynn 
takes it. I guess I spotted the ball a little further upfield than I should have. It's at the 42, not the 47, or was the 42. Mike Lynn has now carried it up to the 48, a gain of six. It'll be second down and four for Chardon. I'll tell you, Mike Lynn showed good power in that. It, he weighs out at 160 pounds, and he ran up against uh, Lamont, who's 260, and still kept the legs pumping, drove on him. Good power running by him. Second down and four. And once again, the handoff to Jim O'Patterny. He picks the hole across midfield down toward the 47-yard line. Thrown down there by Troy Edge, and it looks from here like he picked up enough for a Chardon first down. It's going to be real close, but I think he has it. And we're going to have timeout for a measurement here. Yeah, I saw the referees looking at ball, looking at stakes, looking at ball, looking at stakes. You knew that they were just going to start tapping on the shoulders for the measurement any moment. <laughs> Tell you, Patterny is an exciting runner. I would definitely go out and say from all the runners I saw last year in CBC, I would say he is the most exciting. He's definitely one of the best also, but as far as excitement, Every time he handles the ball, it looks like he could break it open, go all the way down the field. He just has that explosiveness in him and his style of running. And it ought to be an interesting season watching him carry the ball for Chardon. First and 10 for Chardon at the Chardon 47-yard line. And once again, Howard Joyner gives the ball to Jim O'Patterny, and O'Patterny is across the 45 down to about the 41. Thrown down there by DeAndre McKnight, number 24. A gain of six, it'll be second down and four for Chardon. That's a good football name, isn't it, Joe? DeAndre McKnight. Doesn't that sound nice? Yeah, it sure is. And momentarily right now, we have a, uh, an official's timeout on the field. 4.49 to play here in the first quarter. It's, Char or it's uh, Central Catholic 7, Chardon nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. You've already discovered the difference. Cablevision, for people who use television. Use it for 24-hour news and weather coverage. Use it to stay fit, both physically and financially. Or use it to just relax and enjoy your kind of entertainment at any time that's convenient for you. You have discovered the difference. Cablevision, use it every day. Well, we're back to action as that referee's timeout has come to an end. The clock is running, 4.44 to play here in the first quarter. Central Catholic leading at 7 to nothing. The give is to O'Patterny. Breaks to the outside nicely, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15. 10 still on his feet. What balance is all the way down to the one yard line unless they're going to call him out further upfield. Yeah, I it, think about the 13 they called him out, yeah, okay, which is the, a good call. Yeah, it was, I thought it was a good call too, but I'll tell you, he showed some incredible balance, John. Mm. Just amazing. That's what I meant in that statement I made earlier. I think O'Patterny is the most exciting player in this league today. It's just every time he touches the ball, it seems like he can break it. In that case, he was pinched the inside. All of a sudden, use that speed, shot to the outside, outran him down the sideline, the 13-yard line. Number, Actually, that's 14-yard line almost. Right. Number 51, John Nowak made the tackle. First and 10 for Chardon after a beautiful run by O'Patterny at the 12-yard line, and he'll get a chance to do it again. Cuts to the inside, Look at that. breaks through a tackle, and he really had to do some hard running to break the tackle of DeAndre McKnight and get down to about the, we'll call it the 9-yard line. That was a 4-yard gain, but I'll tell you, it was a heck of a lot more than 4 yards worth of running there by Jim O'Patterny. That was a type of play you can't teach. It's pure instinct. You had two defenders standing there, Put little hip shakes on, split them, got the four yards where there was absolutely probably a two-yard loss. Second down and six. Here's the give to Lynn. Lynn inside the five-yard line, down to the four. Maybe they'll even mark it as far as the three. Stopped there by number 51, John Nowak of the Central Catholic Ironman. And we're going to have a timeout for a measurement here. We're going to measure for a first down. I tell you, I'm a little surprised. So far, it's been uh, strictly O'Patterny and Lynn carrying the ball. We haven't seen Scalaris yet, who is a junior running back, had some playing time last year, so he's got a little bit of experience under his belt. Uh, though I suppose once he get down to this territory, I would be surprised not to see him go with the more veteran players. But uh, earlier on, uh, Scalaris hasn't touched the ball yet that I've seen. John, I was talking to 
Bob Doyle before this football game, and I'll tell you, he really likes this 1986 Chardon football team. In fact, he feels that they have the potential to be just as good as last year's 8-2 and two unit as long as they manage to stay away from the injury bug. Well, that may be true. It's one of those, uh, just looking at the roster, the experience and all that, I define it as an unknown team. We're finding out right here they can come back get a drive mounted, go down the field. They're looking good right now. Third and inches for Chardon, and the give is to Lynn, and he was hit right in the backfield, and I don't know whether he fell forward enough to get the first down or not. He was really clubbed right in there by DeAndre McKnight. Yeah, that was gorgeous penetration by him to put the ball right about where it was again. It might have lost a couple more inches. That's about it. But essentially, it's the same place where third down, or fourth down now, excuse me, and uh, roughly the length of the ball for the first down. Right, so Lynn didn't gain an inch on that play. Ball's still at the same place it was where they started, except now it's fourth down. Howard Joyner gives the ball to O'Patterny, and O'Patterny is in for the touchdown. Jim O'Patterny takes it home on fourth down from four yards out, although he only had an inch to go to get the first down, or a couple of inches. Brilliant running by the outstanding Chardon running back, who is looking forward to a big senior year, and it's seven to six. Right. I tell you, these two teams, uh, beginning last year and so far what we see here, well-matched teams that give you a good, exciting ball game. Last year was trade touchdowns back and forth. Uh, Chardon ended up getting the top of it on the extra points. Right now, we're in the same situation where it's just trading the touchdowns. Good offenses, good defenses. It's just uh, power against power, and it makes for a good ball game. Chuck Straczynski will attempt the extra point. Kevin Gooch will hold, but now it's going to be a two-point attempt, and uh, I don't know whether that was intentional or whether that was just a bad snap that came into the arms of Chuck Straczynski. Well, I'm sure it was that's a bad snap. That's what I Straczynski think, too. Straczynski received the ball like, uh, oh, my gosh, i got to do something. You know, it's, it was a complete surprise. Normally, if it's a planned snap back to the guy, he's moving as the ball is coming to him. He's anticipating it. Anyway, we have 3 minutes, 22 seconds to play here in the first quarter with our score, Central Catholic 7, Chardon 6. We'll be back after this timeout. The dawn is breaking, and it begins again. The spirit lives on with pride in the past and footsteps to the future. He's Robert Jackson of the Cleveland Browns, and he's seen it in the faces of young people, learning the values that will last them a lifetime. He was a Cub Scout and went on to become a Boy Scout, and today he's a Scout leader. Here's where courage and teamwork Independence and interdependency are born in young people. United Way and the National Football League want to salute the Boy Scouts of America on this their 75th Diamond Jubilee, 1910 to 1985. The spirit lives on. This year, be part of the spirit. Support scouting through your United Way. Chuck Straczynski will kick off, and it's taken deep by uh, Vernon Bentley, and Vernon Bentley breaks out of the pack across the 45 out to about the 46-yard line. He only had a couple of men to beat. Fortunately for Chardon, one of them was Chuck Straczynski, the kicker, and he managed to make the tackle. It'll be first and 10 for Central Catholic at the Central Catholic 46-yard line. I tell you, this is fun football, wouldn't you say, Joe? I really yeah, enjoy is. this, where the ball gets moved up and down the field. You have all kinds of good excitement, the long breakaway passes and all, and Jim is asking for there a wave, are. Joe. There they are. That's John. That's Joe. That's Faith. <laughs> nice wave. And she's a lot better looking than the other two characters. Anyway, with 2.59 to play here in the first quarter. <laughs> And that's Jim, the cameraman. And I noticed that they took him off of that three shot rather quickly. That's a, maybe he was going to zoom in on us and show all of our zips or something. You know, I never know. But um, <clears throat> we had a timeout taken. I'm not really sure. I missed who it was. I tell you, you get your moment in the sun and you forget about everything else. It's your fault, Jim. You did it. That's a, anyway, 
Uh, it's been quite a first quarter here, John. You know, there's been a lot of action. Very reminiscent of the game that we did last year between Shard and Central Catholic. Almost like deja vu. Which, last year's game was fun. It was the first game that uh, Cablevision had done. And uh, it was just a very, very enjoyable. You had plenty of action, uh, good football being played. Because, uh, what, we've had one penalty flag so far, that's it. So this is not sloppy football. It's two teams that are well-coached, ready to play, and are playing exceptional football now, and it's just enjoyable to watch. It certainly is. <clears throat> and George Zero and the Central Catholic Ironmen would like to make it a little more enjoyable for them. They didn't do it that time because we're going to have a penalty, and the penalty is going to be on Ron Barron, number 82, because he jumped offside a bit early. It'll be first and 15. Yeah, Barron, like you said, jumped a hair early, and uh, Mike Neely, playing like a good defensive player he is, has capitalized on that and make it stand out even more by shooting. That's what you got to do. If you see any movement on the offensive player's part, you shoot and go give them the shot because you can't wait. You got to react off of those movements like that. First and 15 for Central Catholic, and that penalty takes them all the way back to the Central Catholic 40-yard line. You know, every, I have to remind you of this because we haven't reminded you yet, and it wasn't very nice of us. Tonight's game, of course, you're seeing it tonight on Tuesday. Every other week of the season, it'll be Monday at 7. And uh, anyway, here's the give to the man that Mark Dolan was talking about before the game started in our intro, and that is Damon Cross. Damon Cross, the man who inherited the shoes of Randy Ramsey, as Mark so aptly put it in the pregame promo. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, Coach Hodakovic for Central Catholic was talking about it, and he said, a little rough around the edges, needs some work, but he sees an exceptional high school career for this junior running back. He's got two years to match up to Kevin Ra or uh, Randy Ramsey's shoes, but uh, Coach Odakovic feels he's equally capable of being an exceptional running back. Hermes comes wide to the right in the slot right as Dave Grudzinski, zero to throw under heavy pressure, rolls to the outside and fires a dangerous pass toward the sideline in the general direction of Mike Kermes, number 89. Excellent coverage on the play by Fred Kyle, a man who we saw a lot of last year, number 27. Yeah, I'll tell you, right now, down in, in the trenches, <coughs> on both sides of the field, I think Chardon is uh, in the lead. Offensively, their line is controlling the, the line of scrimmage. Defensively, uh, Central Catholic's uh, line isn't doing a job. Chardon is pushing them back and uh, not giving quarterback zero the opportunity to show off his talents uh, successfully. Really, except for the 67-yard touchdown run by zero, the Central Catholic offense has done very little. Zero dumps it long over the middle, and it's overthrown. Intended down there for number 82, Ron Barron. Barron was anything but wide open, trying to run a post pattern against that zone defense. It'll be fourth down, about 13 yards to go. And once again, Central Catholic will be forced to punt with 2.03 to play here in the first quarter. I'll tell you, that play illustrated the strength of quarterback Zero's arms, though. He's fading back, trying to get away from the incoming Chardon rush. He, feet weren't set, and he still heaved that ball probably 35, 40 yards in the air at a nice tight spiral. Strong, strong arm. And once again, that punt was almost blocked off the foot of Troy Edge, and a fair catch is called for downfield by Mike Neely. Is that 89 or 88? It's 80. Well, I guess it's 88. Bob Sotka, who was down there and made the fair catch. Anyway, Chardon will have excellent field position. Well, not excellent field position, but decent field position. They're at the 34-yard line of the Hilltoppers. It'll be first and 10. Yeah, we'll see if Chardon can go. The offensive line again can control. I'll tell you, so far, they've impressed me. They had a strong senior offensive line and a very good offensive line last year. This year's line looks uh, just as well. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Howard Joyner gives the ball to Mike Lynn. No, that's not Mike Lynn. That is Mike Scolaris carrying the ball for the first time. Yeah, finally, like I Mike, said, I was wondering how he disappeared, but finally we do get to see Scolaris. Mike Scolaris takes it up to the 39-yard line. And he's very close to a first down. We're going to have a referee's timeout here to measure it. You know, John, it's going to be a very interesting season this year. I know that a, a lot of 
people are talking about uh, Orange as the team to beat in the CBC, and I'm a bit surprised because I really didn't think that they had that much last year outside of their outstanding quarterback, Kevin Owen. I really thought that they had very little, frankly. And it's a, you know, I'm surprised to hear that. Essentially, as I understand it, though, it's a consensus of coaches, so uh, they must know who's returning and that sort of stuff because they chart them a lot tighter than we do, and uh, they must know of stuff that we don't, Joe. I they must agree have had you. an awful lot of sophomores and juniors playing on that ball club last year. Yeah. So they must have had a lot of them. And of course, uh, Kevin Owen, in fact, happens to be one of them. He'll be back this year and did some good things for Orange Lions last year. We'll see what he does this season. And then here's the give again to Scalaris. Scalaris across the midfield stripe all the way down to the 40-yard line of Central Catholic. It'll be another Chardon first down. And as you were saying before, John, Chardon just controlling both sides of the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. Offense and defense. It was a nice was a hole opened up uh, off the left tackle guard position by Rick Woods and Jim Silk. Very, very fine up front blocking by those two gentlemen. Outstanding line play has been the key here for Chardon in the early going. The Hilltoppers with the ball, first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Here's the pitch coming left, though. Patterny, 40, 35, 30, down to the 28-yard line. Once again, huge holes blown through that Central Catholic defense. Number 44, Dave Lasecki, a co-captain, finally came over to make the stop. It'll be another first down for Chardon at the 28-yard line. I mentioned on the Central Catholic sidelines, they're going through a little bit of problems. First couple series, it was strictly O'Patterny and uh, Lynn carrying the ball. Now they're opening up Scalaris a little bit. That gives them the three-pronged uh, offensive weapon to come at them. Uh, they won't know what to look for. Chardon ball, first and 10 at the 28, and Mike Lynn takes it across the 25, down toward the 24. Wrapped up there by Lamont Bentley, as we said before, big Lamont Bentley. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. The first quarter has come to an end here at Chardon High School Memorial Field with our score. At the end of one, the Cleveland Central Catholic Ironman seven, the Chardon Hilltopper six, will be back after this timeout. Hello, I'm Warren Babcock. Things have changed since 1931 when my dad and granddad started selling Chrysler products. Junction Auto and Joga County have changed also and our cars have changed tremendously. Hi, I'm Ed Babcock. One thing has not changed. Our commitment to give you the best deal and the best possible service is as strong now as ever. As we start our 55th year, please meet the people who work hard with pride to handle all of your car needs. Parts are 15,000 factory authorized and high performance parts. Service, our award winning service department is waiting to serve you. Body Shop, we hope you don't, but if you do, our Body Shop can make it new. Salesmen, our courteous and professional salesmen will help you make the right choice. Office, on the phones and behind the scenes, our office staff pulls it all together. Most importantly, we want to thank you, our customers, for helping us grow. You're number one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club. It's the only place in town where workouts are fun. Join our aerobics and dance classes. Play racquetball with a friend or in a league on your choice of eight thermostatically controlled courts. At Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, our trained staff will guide you through Nautilus and isokinetic exercise equipment and will develop a personalized toning and conditioning program just for you. Don't have the time to get a conventional tan? Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club invites you to experience our private tanning center. It's the quick convenient way towards looking your best. And mom and dad, bring the young ones along. While you're relaxing after a workout in our comfortable lounge area, your child is receiving the best care in our supervised nursery. Coming soon to the Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club is an indoor pool for year-round swimming. So join our new swim club and the rest of our facilities before September 30th and save $100 off the regular membership rates. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, the fun way to stay in shape. 
Well, we're getting ready to start second quarter action as you see that lovely fade out down into the field of play. First and 10 for second down and six, rather, for Chardon the 25. And the give is to Scolaris. I think it was Scolaris, number 20 down in there. Maybe I got the wrong number. I wouldn't be surprised if I did. It looks like we've got some problems. I think it's Jim O'Patterny who carried the ball, wasn't it? Yes, it was O'Patterny. It was Jim O'Patterny who carried the ball. And there is a flag on the play. And we also have an official's timeout on the field. And we'll take this opportunity to cut away for a minute. 11 minutes and 54 seconds to play here in the first half. Our score, Central Catholic 7, Chardon 6. We'll be back after this timeout. Destination Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers still ring proud and true and are congruent with the progress of the present. Walk along its granite-girdled coast and enjoy its quiet fishing villages. New England. Taste its vitality and revel in its peace. Well, we're back to action. And we'll check out the flag on that play now, now that the official's timeout has come to an end. We'll try to get a clarification. It was against Central Catholic, and I believe it took it half the distance to the goal down there, John. Yeah, I believe you're right, Joe. And it did. In fact, it's first and goal for the Hilltoppers, first and goal at the nine-yard line of Central Catholic. And we're going to have a little bit of a mix-up down there. Hilltoppers didn't get that play off in time. They'll lose five yards on the penalty. It'll now be first and goal from the 14. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when Coach Doyle does work as young quarterback in the offensive scheme. Like I said, right now, he's pretty much being used for handoffs. We work Scalaris into the offense slowly. Maybe he's going to do the same basic thing with uh, quarterback Joyner. We'll have to see how that develops. Well, we have yet to see Howard Joyner air the ball out tonight. He has a very strong arm, as he showed us in the pregame warm-ups. And there are a lot of high hopes for this young sophomore quarterback who will be leading the Chardon Hilltoppers offense this season. First and goal at the 14-yard line for Chardon. And once again, he's to give inside to Mike Scolaris, and he's inside the 10 down to about the nine, stopped there by Carlos Medina. Carlos Medina, a five foot 11, 210 pound junior tackle. Some big players on this uh, Cleveland Central Catholic football team. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's uh, getting good front blocking up front again by uh, this whole team. That was run kind of at the center guards position where you got Jim Silk and uh, Chuck Tzee, excuse me, Straczynski and John Perko all handling the middle for Chardon. Second a goal at the nine. There's a fumble. The ball is loose down around the 10-yard line, and I believe Central Catholic has it, and they do. That's a big break for the Ironmen of Central Catholic, and with 10.35 to play here in the first half, they'll take over first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. Just as Chardon was knocking on the door, the turnover comes to take out the drive. Yeah, we'll have to see. This call puts a the whole ball in uh, the defense's court for Chardon to hold them down there because again Central Catholic does not have the kicking game uh, we had a poor punt from their uh, punter the first time and in pregame he wasn't getting anything off so it's up to Chardon to hold him down there to keep good field position when the offense gets it back Central Catholic ball first and ten and zero trying to keep it is instead thrown for a loss back around the seven yard line he was knocked down there by Ed Seletsky It'll be second down and 13 for Central Catholic, back at the Central Catholic 7. I'll tell you that, Zaletsky does have tremendous mobility from that nose tackle position. That was out in the outside region of the defensive end, and he made the tackle. Uh, just 
tremendous quickness, strength. Uh, I can understand why they shifted him over to the middle of the defense to plug up the whole uh, offensive scheme of the opposing team this season. Second down and 13 for Central Catholic at the seven yard line. The pitch is to Damon Cross. And Cross was caught back at the two yard line. Lucky that he wasn't thrown into the end zone for a safety. The play made there by Bob Vincitera. No, it was Bill Henderson, excuse me. Bill Henderson, number 30, who made the tackle, yeah, not Vincitera, number 31. And it'll be a third down, a loss of five on the play, and it'll be third and 18 back at the two yard line. Yeah, defense has risen. Uh, Henderson made a tremendous play from his end position, fought off the block, held his position, which you got to do when you're at the end and the ball carrier just comes right at you. Grab the arms, make a tackle. You're a hero on the play. Good job by Bill Henderson. Third and 18 at the two-yard line, and zero gives it straight up the middle to Damon Cross. He's thrown down right in the backfield and doesn't go very far. Takes it maybe two or three yards up to the five-yard line, but John, the scenario you were talking about before has now developed. It is fourth down. Central Catholic deep in their own territory at the five-yard line with a poor punting game. The last punt was nearly blocked, and in fact, a, a Chardon player may have gotten a piece of that ball. Now they're going to have to punt out of their own end zone, and before they can, flags fly. We're going to have a penalty against somebody, and I think it'll be against Central Catholic for a procedure taking too much time. Yeah, that's going to move him back where the kicker almost will have his heels on the end line, uh, which is not a place you want to be at any time much less if your kicking game isn't that strong. Instead of being on the five now, now it's on the two and a half. And Central Catholic will have to kick it, as John Walsh said, right out of the end zone to do the punting Troy Edge. And, some, and as we've said, Troy Edge tonight has had his problems. He hasn't had anything really, really bad happen, but he has not punted the ball well. He's had a couple of close calls being the normal 15 yards back. He gets that punt away it's a, sort of a high short kick fumbled fumbled down there the ball is still loose central and central catholic. catholic has it bob Sotka was running upfield before he had control of the ball just couldn't hold on to it he fumbled it it came loose and isaiah simmons number 65 came in to make the recovery for central catholic and central catholic has a first down at the 35 yard line I'll tell you, that's a big break for Central Catholic. They had their back. Chardon was going to get tremendous field position out of that. All of a sudden, it's turned to Central Catholic's advantage, where they were really going to have their backs against the wall. First and 10 for Central Catholic at the 35-yard line. As George Zero, the quarterback, brings them up, and again, Central Catholic is going to be whistled for taking too much time. Well, the first quarter was played quite well. This second quarter has been a very sloppy quarter for both teams. Yeah, have you noticed, Joe, through this game, it was something we noted last year, is a different ball is used by uh, Central Catholic and Chardon. Each series, the ball is changed back and forth with the team bringing in its own ball from the sideline. Absolutely. I recall that. I certainly do. And we couldn't figure out why that was going on, and we got that answer a couple of weeks later, if I remember right. Now. Yeah, if I remember, it was a different feel to the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, the ball is given to Damon Cross, and Damon Cross is covered up by a lot of black shirts. Chief among them, number 54, Ed Zaletsky, number 35, Dave Scanlon. It's a loss of two. It'll be second down and 17. I tell you, Dave Scanlon thus far has played a fine game out of that linebacker position. Uh, normally, he would be paired up with Chuck Cox. But Cox has been out with, with a preseason injury. He picked up even before Hi, football Mom. started. Uh, hopefully, for Chardon, he's going
with a preseason injury he picked up even before Hi, football Mom. started. Uh, hopefully, Bouchard needs to. And the give is to Scolaris. I think it was Scolaris, number 20 down in there. Maybe I got the wrong number. I <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if I did. And it looks like they've got some problems. I think it was Jim O'Patterny who carried the ball, wasn't it? Yes, it was O'Patterny. It was Jim O'Patterny who carried the ball. And there is a flag on the play, and we also have an official's timeout on the field. And we'll take this opportunity to cut away for a minute, 11 minutes and 54 seconds to play. Here in the first half, our score, Central Catholic 7, Chardon 6. We'll be back after this timeout. Destination Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers still ring proud and true and are congruent with the progress of the present. Walk along its granite-girdled coast and enjoy its quiet fishing villages. New England. Taste its vitality and revel in its peace. Well, we're back to action. And we'll check out the flag on that play now. Now the official's timeout has come to an end. we we'll try to get a clarification. It was against Central Catholic. And I believe it took it half the distance to the goal down there, John. Yeah, I believe you're right, Joe. And it did. In fact, it's first and goal for the Hilltoppers. First and goal at the nine-yard line of Central Catholic. And we're going to have a little bit of a mix-up down there. Hilltoppers didn't get that play off in time. They'll lose five yards on the penalty. It'll now be first and goal from the 14. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when Coach Doyle does work uh, as young quarterback in the offensive scheme. Like I said, right now he's pretty much being used for handoffs. We work Scalaris into the offense slowly. Maybe he's going to do the same basic thing with uh, quarterback Joyner. We'll have to see how that develops. Well, we have yet to see Howard Joyner air the ball out tonight. He has a very strong arm, as he showed us in the pregame warm-ups. And there are a lot of high hopes for this young sophomore quarterback who will be leading the Chardon Hilltoppers offense this season. First and goal at the 14-yard line for Chardon. And once again, here's the give inside to Mike Scolaris, and he's inside the 10, down to about the 9, stopped there by Carlos Medina. Carlos Medina, a 5'11", 210-pound junior tackle. Some big players on this uh, Cleveland Central Catholic football team. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's a... Uh Getting good front blocking up front again by uh, this whole team. That was run kind of at the center guard's position where you got Jim Silk and uh, Chuck Straczynski and John Perko all handling the middle for Chardon. Second and goal at the nine. There's a fumble. The ball is loose down around the 10-yard line, and I believe Central Catholic has it, and they do. That's a big break for the Ironmen of Central Catholic, and with 10.35 to play here in the first half, They'll take over first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. Just as Chardon was knocking on the door, the turnover comes to take out the drive. Yeah, we have to see Chardon. This call puts the, the whole ball in uh, the defense's court for Chardon to hold them down there because, again, Central Catholic does not have the kicking game. Uh, we had a poor punt from their uh, punter the first time, and in pregame, he wasn't getting anything off. So it's up to Chardon to hold them down there to keep good field position when the offense gets it back. Central Catholic ball, first and ten, and zero, trying to keep it, is instead thrown for a loss. Back around the seven-yard line, he was knocked down there by Ed Seletsky. It'll be second down and 13 for Central Catholic, back at the Central Catholic seven. I'll tell you that, Seletsky does have tremendous mobility in that nose tackle position. That was out in the outside region of the defensive end, and he made the tackle. Uh, just tremendous quickness, strength, uh, 
I can understand why they shifted them over to the middle of the defense to plug up the whole uh, offensive scheme of the opposing team this season. Second down and 13 for Central Catholic at the seven yard line. The pitch is to Damon Cross. And Cross was caught back at the two yard line. Lucky that he wasn't thrown into the end zone for a safety. The play made there by Bob Vincitera. No, it was Bill Henderson, excuse me. Bill Henderson, number 30, who made the tackle, yeah, not no. Vincitera, number 31. And it'll be a third down, a loss of five on the play, and it'll be third and 18 back at the two yard line. Yeah, defense has risen. Uh, Henderson made a tremendous play from his end position, fought off the block, held his position, which you got to do when you're at the end and the ball carrier just comes right at you. Grab the arms, make a tackle, you're a hero on the play. Good job by Bill Henderson. Third and 18 at the two yard line, and zero gives it straight up the middle to Damon Cross. He's thrown down right in the backfield and doesn't go very far. Takes it maybe two or three yards up to the five yard line. But, John, the scenario you were talking about before has now developed. It is fourth down. Central Catholic deep in their own territory at the five yard line with a poor punting game. The last punt was nearly blocked. And in fact, a, a Chardon player may have gotten a piece of that ball. Now they're going to have to punt out of their own end zone. And before they can, flags fly. We're going to have a penalty against somebody, and I think it'll be against Central Catholic for a procedure taking too much time. Yeah, and that's going to move him back where the kicker almost will have his heels on the end line, uh, which is not a place you want to be at any time, much less if your kicking game isn't that strong. Instead of being on the five now, now it's on the two and a half, and Central Catholic will have to kick it, as John Walsh said, right out of the end zone to do the punting Troy Edge, and, and as we've said, Troy Edge tonight has had his problems. He hasn't had anything really, really bad happen, but he has not punted the ball well. He's had a couple of close calls, being the normal 15 yards back. He gets that punt away. It's uh, sort of a high short kick, fumbled, fumbled down there. The ball is still loose, That's and Central Catholic. Catholic has it. Bob Sotka was running upfield before he had control of the ball, just couldn't hold on to it. He fumbled it, it came loose, and Isaiah Simmons, number 65, came in to make the recovery for Central Catholic, and Central Catholic has a first down at the 35-yard line. I'll tell you, that's a big break for Central Catholic. They had their back, Chardon was going to get tremendous field position out of that. All of a sudden, it's turned to Central Catholic's advantage, where they were really going to have their backs against the wall. First and 10 for Central Catholic at the 35-yard line as George Zero, the quarterback, brings him up. And again, Central Catholic is going to be whistled for taking too much time. Well, the first quarter was played quite well. This second quarter has been a very sloppy quarter for both teams. Yeah, have you noticed, Joe, through this game, it was something we know last year, is a different ball is used by uh, Central Catholic and Chardon. Each series, the ball is changed back and forth with the team bringing in its own ball from the sideline. Absolutely. I recall that. I certainly do. And we couldn't figure out why that was going on. And we got that answer a couple of weeks later, if I remember right. Now. Yeah, if I remember, it was a different feel to the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, the ball is given to Damon Cross, and Damon Cross is covered up by a lot of black shirts. Chief among them, number 54, Ed Zaletsky, number 35, Dave Scanlon. It's a loss of two. It'll be second down and 17. I tell you, Dave Scanlon thus far has played a fine game out of that linebacker position. Uh, normally, he would be paired up with Chuck Cox. But Cox has been out with, with a preseason injury. He picked up even before Hi, football Mom. started. Uh, hopefully for Chardon, he's going to be in the lineup again soon. Second and 17 for Central Catholic. Zero, keeping it on the option. Cuts the outside, 35-40. And he's cut down right at the 40-yard line. Good running by George Zero. The blocking in front of him was nothing to get excited over. But he turned uh, what could have been a big loss into a seven-yard gain. Run out of bounds there by Ken Fox. It'll be third down and 10 for Central Catholic at the 35-yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you, quarterback zero isn't a very, very impressive runner in his own right. We haven't had the opportunity to see his arm that we were touting uh, before the game, but uh, his running is uh, superb. He's got good cutting ability. He's got exceptionally quick feet that move around and 
gives him that cutting ability also. A good running by quarterback zero. Third down for Central Catholic at 10 yards to go, and George Zero drops the throw, fires it to the outside. It's overthrown and almost intercepted by Ken Fox at midfield. So it'll be fourth down. Central Catholic, after getting an opportunity to start another possession after the fumble by Sotka, doesn't come through. They're forced to punt. And once again, Troy Edge will come on to do the kicking for Cleveland Central Catholic. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ken Fox is probably more disappointed than anybody he didn't uh, hold on to that ball because he slapped his helmet and he was looking ahead at a blank sideline. He could have ran all the way. Saka is deep to receive along with Mike Lynn. Troy Edge, again, just barely got it off. A fair catch is called for. The ball hits and takes a shard and bounce. And it's finally downed by Central Catholic at the 43-yard line. So we have timeout on the field. Five minutes, 40 seconds to play in the first half. With our score, Central Catholic 7, Chardon 6. We'll be back after this timeout. The Century 21 on the square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 on the square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 on the Square Realty today. Hello, I'm Warren Babcock. Things have changed since 1931 when my dad and granddad started selling Chrysler products. Junction Auto and Joga County have changed also, and our cars have changed tremendously. Hi, I'm Ed Babcock. One thing has not changed. Our commitment to give you the best deal and the best possible service is as strong now as ever. As we start our 55th year, please meet the people who work hard with pride to handle all of your car needs. Parts are 15,000 factory authorized and high performance parts. Service, our award winning service department is waiting to serve you. Body Shop, we hope you don't, but if you do, our Body Shop can make it new. Salesman, our courteous and professional salesman will help you make the right choice. Office, on the phones and behind the scenes, our office staff pulls it all together. Most importantly, we want to thank you, our customers, for helping us grow. You're number one. Thank you. Thank you. Back to action once again, and Howard Joyner pitches the ball to O'Patterny, who gets a huge hole. He's across midfield, down inside the 45 into the 43-yard line. He picked up a first down and more, 13 yards on the play. First and 10 for Chardon at the Central Catholic 43-yard line. I'll tell you, in that off-tackle position, uh, he's getting excellent, excellent holes open up on both sides of the line. That particular case is Brian Wakeup and Ricky Woods opening up the gaping hole for O'Patterny to show his stuff. First and 10 for Chardon at the Central Catholic 43, and Howard Joyner again gives the ball to O'Patterny across the 40, 35, 30, 25. He's down to the 21-yard line. Jim O'Patterny, a one-man gang for the Chardon Hilltoppers. He has 22 yards and another first down. I tell you, again, that was an impressive hole, opened up at the line. That side of me was the right side of the line. Uh, Mark Neely, Todd Lee, John Perko, holding people away, giving them a gaping hole to run. That's all he needs. A pattern he gets through that, gets into the secondary, cut against the grain, made the big gainer out of a good blocking situation also. Good team effort by everybody. First and 10 at the 21-yard line of Central Catholic, and we had some movement in the Chardon line. John Perko, number 57, got off the line a little too quickly, and it'll cost the Hilltoppers five yards. Yeah, I believe that was the case with John Perko heard in the huddle that if play was on one, everybody else heard it was on two. Because he just shot out of there, uh, just uh, seemed to count early. Mm -hmm. Just beat that snap count a little too anxious. And that'll be first and 15 for Chardon. Back at the 26-yard line, 4.39 to play here in the first half. The clock is running. First and 10, first and 15, rather, for Chardon at the 26. Joiner. Rolling to his right, gives the ball on a reverse now across the uh, field to Mike Lynn, I believe. 
And uh, no, that might have been Scolaris. Yeah, that was that was Scolaris. Those uniforms from where we're looking at them kind of run together and sometimes 20 looks like 23. But anyway, it'll be a gain of one on the play, make it second down and 14. Second down and 14 for Chardon as we near the four minute mark of the first half. Yeah, it was a good job by John Nowak, a uh, central Catholic of holy position, uh, not fall for the counter. Rolling to his right is Joyner to throw for the first time down. It is caught and then dropped. It was caught by Mike Neely, number 89, who was wide open, and then he dropped it, but I believe they're going to call it a catch. Yeah, they said the ball was coughed off when he uh, hit the ground. Beautiful, beautiful catch by Mike Neely on that when he strung out. There was a little bit overthrow. Strung out, uses full height, and pulled the ball in, and gorgeous, gorgeous catch. Once again, though, we got an opportunity to see the arm of the sophomore Howard Joyner through a great pass. We have timeout on, on the... No, I guess we... Yeah, we do. Yeah, we... Coach Odakovic is out on the field questioning whether that was a completed pass or not. His contention probably is it was dropped as he was going down. Uh, really, from my angle, I didn't have the vantage point to tell, so I can't really agree or disagree with Coach Odakovic. Did well, you get a good look at it, Joe? No, I really didn't, but while we have timeout on the field, let's take a break here. 3.49 to play with our score. Central Catholic 7, Chardon 6. We'll be back after this timeout. You've already discovered the difference. Cablevision. For people who use television. Use it for 24-hour news and weather coverage. Use it to stay fit, both physically and financially. Or use it to just relax and enjoy your kind of entertainment at any time that's convenient for you. You have discovered the difference. Cablevision. Use it every day. Well, Al Hodakovic was disputing whether that was a catch or not. That was the reason why they called the timeout. Anyway, it's a catch. First and goal at the six-yard line, and O'Patterny takes the ball right into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, they got real angry there about that one play, and they just kind of forgot to play defense. Now it's Chardon 12, Central Catholic 7. I'll tell you, that offensive line is impressive. I really was unsure. Uh, looking down the list, Todd Lee is the only one on it that's a returning starter from last year. A couple of players had a reasonable amount of playing time. Uh, John Perko at the one guard position. Chuck Trzynski got a decent amount of playing time. But for the most part, it's an inexperienced line. And they're just playing like they've been playing together for two, three years now. Doing a gorgeous job opening up holes for the Great running of O'Patterny and company. Chardon will go for the two-point conversion. Howard Joyner rolling to his right, looking for a receiver in the end zone, and it's caught. A beautiful throw by Howard Joyner, caught by Mike Neely for the two-point conversion, and Chardon leads it 14-7. to seven. I tell you, that was another fine catch by Neely, who seems to be a premier end. Uh, it's interesting. That's, that's two completed passes by Chardon, which historically... Uh, Two passes may cover the first half of the season for him. Chardon not being a real big passing team. Well, three minutes and 45 seconds to play here in the first half. And we do have one more timeout coming up. We'll get that after the next uh, change of possession. John, it's been an interesting ball game. It's been a fun point. golf really ball has. game. It's been a lot of fun. And it's been a lot of fun, especially for Jim O'Patterny who has really run the daylights out of the ball this evening for the Chardon Hilltoppers. Oh, yeah, he lo looks like he wants to live up to that all-league ranking and probably step that up to uh, all county, all state, uh, however far Jim can go. And doesn't look like there's a ceiling on his talents from the look of this appearance tonight. Vernon Bentley is deep to receive the kickoff from Chuck Straczynski, and he will receive it. He'll take it at about the 10, 15, 20. 25, he's got a big hole up the middle. It gets out across the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Central Catholic will have the ball first and 10 at the Central Catholic 34. You'll see if Coach Odakovic changes his offensive philosophy a little bit and decides to put the ball in the air more with, I'm assuming, utilizing rollouts with quarterback zero. Because he's known now as a threat as a runner. If you take the running ability, couple with a rollout pattern, it kind of gets people coming up, will free a receiver so he can pass to him. Uh, be interested to see if he incorporates that into his game plan now. 
George Zero has a lot of speed, and I think it'd be great for that sort of an offense. Instead, he's going to drop back, and his pass is intercepted. It's intercepted there by Bill Henderson, who takes it in for the touchdown. That was a very, very poor pass by quarterback Zero. It seemed like he didn't see Henderson holding down his end position. Henderson was keying, hanging in there, in case Zero rolled around his way to hold his ground. He just stepped in front. It was like the pass was to Henderson. A nice return by Henderson. Played his position properly. He's looking very, very good at that defensive end position. George Zero simply should have thrown that ball away because Bill Henderson diagnosed the play perfectly. Just should have thrown it right away. Should have thrown it toward the sideline, thrown it where nobody could get their hands on it, but he made a bad, bad mistake. I think he realized, as I saw him down on the ground there, pounding his fists on the ground, I think he knew what he did, but, you know, you just don't get to that point there. Yeah, it's almost like yeah, it's uh, I suspect he just didn't see Henderson for whatever reason. Maybe he was shielded by another player coming in or what. I'm not sure of the intent, but uh, some reason he threw it right to Henderson. <laughs> and, and we'll remind you, of course, that every Monday night this fall at 7 o'clock, I believe it's on Channel 9 this year, guys. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are going to see CBC football. Uh, we can't tell you what the games are in advance uh, because of our uh, agreements with the schools, uh, but we can tell you that uh, uh, at least one of the four teams in our service area will be represented every week. You know, Kenston, Chagrin Falls, Chardon, West Geauga, one of those four schools will be involved in the game. And it's going to be a fun season. We had a lot of fun last year, and uh, we're looking forward to a real good season again this season. Yeah, we're starting out the same way we did last year. I'll tell you, if next week Chardon was playing Central Catholic again, that was a game we could guarantee an exciting game, <laughs> but that's not going to be the case. No rematch this year. Absolutely. Chuck Straczynski will attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. So Straczynski puts it through. We have timeout on the field. Three minutes and 19 seconds to play here in the first half with our score, Chardon 21, Cleveland Central Catholic 7. We'll be back after this timeout. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club. It's the only place in town where workouts are fun. Join our aerobics and dance classes. Play racquetball with a friend or in a league on your choice of eight thermostatically controlled courts. At Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, our trained staff will guide you through Nautilus and isokinetic exercise equipment and will develop a personalized toning and conditioning program just for you. Don't have the time to get a conventional tan? Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club invites you to experience our private tanning center. It's the quick, convenient way towards looking your best. And mom and dad, bring the young ones along. While you're relaxing after a workout in our comfortable lounge area, your child is receiving the best care in our supervised nursery. Coming soon to the Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club is an indoor pool for year-round swimming. So join our new swim club and the rest of our facilities before September 30th and save $100 off the regular membership rates. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, the fun way to stay in shape. Three minutes and 19 seconds to play here in the first half. Chardon leads it 21 to 7 after that interception and 35-yard return by Bill Henderson. Straczynski's kickoff is taken down there deep by Vernon Bentley, and Vernon Bentley is still on his feet, and he's out across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. He's tackled there by a horde of Chardon Hilltoppers, and chief among them, that's my expression this year, guys, <laughs> Bill Pascavage, or not Rob, <laughs> Rob Pascavage, number 70, made the tackle. <laughs> A, a horde we can expect a lot of this year, yes, Joe? Yes, we can expect a, a horde this year and chief among them. What did you do? Go uh, through your little uh, thesaurus of football <laughs> terms and come up with that one? Yes, I, uh, I have my own dictionary of battered cliches that I use <laughs> for all these games. And uh, the give is to from zero to Damon Cross, and Damon Cross takes it up to about the 40-yard line, a gain of six. It'll be second down at four. The Central Catholic has shown us some real good people at the skilled positions, but if you don't have a line in front of you, you don't have a football team. That's what I'm seeing. 
I mentioned that earlier, Joe. In the trenches, both offensively and defensively, Chardon is absolutely controlling the line of scrimmage. Clock is running. Two and a half minutes to play here in the first half, and they give us the cross. The cross gets across the 40 to the 41. Picks up about two yards on the play. John Perko made the tackle. Gain of two. It'll be third and four for Central Catholic at the Central Catholic 41-yard line. I'll tell you, John Perko read that, plugged that hole, came in shooting and make a good hard hit that froze uh, the running back right in his spot. Real good linebacker play by John Perko. Walsh playing a good offensive guard tonight, too. Third and four. George Zero rolling to his left. He's got a man wide open down there and overthrows him. That was Dave Lasecki. And it was overthrown. It'll be fourth down, and Central Catholic will be forced to punt. I tell you, that was a rare time where... Uh, Zero had plenty of time to throw. He had good protection on that particular play. We well, really haven't had much of an opportunity to see safety man Fred Kyle tonight because the line of scrimmage has been keeping everything right there. But uh, I watched him on that particular play. He read it real well, came over as a safety man should, and did cover on that play. Troy Edge gets it right off the side of his foot. A horrible kick but it takes a good Central Catholic roll inside the 35, and it rolls dead, in fact, right on the 35-yard line where it's killed by the Ironman. With 1.38 to go, Chardon will take over first and 10 at the 35-yard line. We will have uh, some halftime festivities for you this evening. This is about that time. We're only about a minute and 35 seconds away from halftime. We are going to have... Uh, some uh, interviews. We're going to have a feature on the uh, Chardon Hilltoppers cheerleaders, and we're also uh, going to have the bands for you at halftime. That'll be a regular feature. We'll do that every week this year. We'll have the bands every week this year, and the give goes to Scolaris, who picks up about a yard. Wondered whether Bob Doyle was going to uncork Howard Joyner here with so little time left in the half, but I think he's elected to play it safe and take a 13-point lead into the locker room. I think that's a good choice, too. Uh, no sense to really push it right now. You got the, I think it's a 14-point lead. Keep it. Don't do anything that could put you in jeopardy of having a seven-point game. <laughs> Second down and nine for Chardon. Joyner rolls to his left, steps into the pocket, fires. It's underthrown and incomplete. Intended down there for... Uh, number 20, Mike Scolaris. Uh, having trouble picking up those numbers in the 20s for some reason. It'll be third down. Howard Joyner was hit as he threw that ball and uh, sort of forced it off course and came up underthrown. But, boy, that young man has a cannon of an arm, and it'll be interesting to see him throughout the rest of this season. Yeah, I tell you, Nowak came in from his end position and uh, did put a hit on uh, Joyner. Find out what varsity hitting's all about. Third down and 10. Joyner rolling to his left, looking for a receiver. His pass is tipped and almost intercepted. Dave Lasecki, the co-captain, very, very nearly made the play. That would have been a big help to Central Catholic, but Lasecki couldn't come up with the interception. It'll be fourth down, and with 33 seconds to play here in the first half, Cleveland Central Catholic will be forced to punt. Or, or Chardon will be forced to punt. Two Cleveland Central Catholics. Two Cleveland Central Catholics. <laughs> I'll tell you, it looked like Coach Doyle uh, must have been following your thought, thought pattern, Joe. He wanted to put more points on the board, going right to the air. Uh, he didn't like the conservative approach I was uh, coming up with. I've gotten so used tonight to saying Cleveland Central Catholic punting that, you know, I just did it. Mike Scolaris punts it downfield to Vernon Bentley, and Vernon Bentley is covered up quickly by the... Chardon special teams, and down there to do most of the quick covering was number 32, Jeff Palima, who's done a lot of special teams play and outstanding special teams play for the Hilltoppers over the past couple seasons. Yeah, what game was it? Was that Riverside game last year? That it was uh, West Yaga where he ran back that touchdown. Yeah, ran back on the kickoff. opening kickoff. That's right. That was, that was West Yaga. Yeah, I remember he had one run back, so uh, he's definitely a good uh, special teams player as well as being an exceptional monster back. Once again at halftime, we'll have the bands and a feature on the Chardon Hilltoppers cheerleading squad. 
And basically, Central Catholic has decided that they're going to run out the clock here. So that give went to Damon Cross. And now I guess they're going to call time. No, they're not going to call timeout. They're just going to let it run right out. Yeah, it was Rob Pascavich on the tackle there. And that's the end of the first half. The first half is over here at Memorial Field in Chardon, Ohio with our score. Chardon 21, Cleveland Central Catholic 7. We'll be back with all the halftime festivities after this timeout. The Century 21 on the square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 on the square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 on the square realty today. Destination Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers... ...job in the trenches for Chardon and that offensive line just ran the ball game for him. That's why they got 21 points on the scoreboard first half. Tremendous, tremendous job. See if they can sustain it in the second half. Okay, the tri triumvirate of O'Patterney, Kalima, and Lynn deep to receive this kickoff, but once again, it's taken by an up back, and that is Dave Scanlon. Dave Scanlon gets it out to about the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Chardon from the Chardon 40. I guess with Central Catholic kicking, uh, Scanlon is one of the deep men now because that seems to be about the extent of how far they can kick the ball. It's strange. Central Catholic has very good quality players. Key people are just uh, tremendously skilled. Yet that's two consecutive years we see them. They're very, very weak in the kicking department. I really don't understand why out of the whole school you can't come up with somebody that can kick the ball properly but it seems to be a problem for Central Catholic. Howard Joyner the quarterback once again gives the ball to O'Patter and no, that's Scolaris a big ball 50 down to the 48 yard line. If he had had another step he might have broken that play. Troy Edge made the tackle. It's first and 10 for Chardon at the Central Catholic 48 yard line. I'll tell you, I understand how immediately you made the distinction that was O'Patterny. Scolaris does run in a similar style. He doesn't have the experience to read where the defensive people are or feel them, I guess would be more terminology. So he doesn't make the cuts that O'Patterny does, but he has a high step, the quickness of O'Patterny. Uh, they're very, very similar runners. First and 10 of the 48-yard line. Give to O'Patterny on the misdirection. Breaks the tackle. 45 down to the 43-yard line where he's finally wrapped up by a man who will probably get our nomination for name of the year, DeAndre McKnight. I do like that name. That is definitely, that, that man belongs in a football field. He's just got one of those names. There's certain people that are born to play football. With a name like that, you're born to play football. Man, that, that's star quality, you know? I mean, that's Hollywood. DeAndre McKnight. How's that? And he is a fine football player, too. Second and six of the 44-yard line. Here's the give to Lynn, 40, 35, 30. And finally, he's tripped up across the 30-yard line at the 26 by Troy Edge, the safety man, really having a tough time tonight. He's had a lot of action come his way. He's had to make a lot of tackles back there in the last line of defense. I tell you, that again illustrates the fact of gaping holes, multi-dimensional backs for Chardon, where they can come at you with three quality ball carriers, Lynn O'Patterny and Scalaris. We got the good quarterback who's making crisp handoffs right now, having a good sophomore opening varsity experience. Chardon's looking good. They're playing an outstanding football game. Here's Lynn across the 20 down to about the 16. He is very close to another Chardon first down. 
And I'll tell you, that, that offensive line, I just can't say enough. I hate to keep a run, running into the ground, but they forced you to do that. There was Ricky Woods and Jim Silk that time that just flew the whole defense of the Central Catholic Ironmen right back five yards deep, and it makes the running back's job easy, you know. Just a tremendous, tremendous job by that front line of Chardon. And after the measurement, it is a first down. Tell you that halftime cool off didn't slow Chardon down a bit. No, it sure didn't. First and ten for the Hilltoppers at the 17 yard line of Cleveland Central Catholic. No Patterny there in the slot left. The setbacks are Scolaris and Lynn, and we are going to have a penalty against Central Catholic. Somebody moved offside. I think it might have been our friend, Mr. McKnight, who came charging in there. I believe so, from his nose tackle. Mm -hmm. And Which, made some contact. You know, that's something I really can't understand, how a nose man can go offside. I mean, my God, he's looking right at the ball. <laughs> how can know. you jump? You know, it's, <laughs> that always amazes me. I think sometimes they just get so aggressive, you know what I mean? They're thinking, I'm going to stop this play, I'm going to stop this play. They just move, you know, and forget their mental concentration. Anyway, here's the give to Lynn on first and five. And Lynn is inside the 10 down around the five-yard line, and I believe he will have enough for a Chardon first and goal there. It is first and goal for the Hilltoppers right around the five-yard line. Tell you, Joe, I got a question for you now. Uh -huh. I'll kind of put you on the spot a little bit. Yes, sir. Do you As think if you have never done that before? Yeah, well, it's time to get it started early in the year. Do you think Chardon's offensive line, they're playing extremely impressively tonight? Do you think they're that strong? Or is it a case of uh, Central Catholic being weak in that area? What would be your opinion on that after this play? <laughs> First, a goal from the five. The give us to Lynn, I believe. Lynn down to about the two-yard line. It'll be second and goal. Or if you want to hedge, you can wait uh, two, three more weeks. Uh, maybe we'll get the opportunity to see Chardon again, and you can more reasonably evaluate him. Well, I was about to say that I was going to wimp out and say that I need to look at them a couple more times before I can make a statement like that. I understand. That's you know, why I asked... I asked you the question before you had the opportunity to ask me, because <laughs> I don't really know. Because the one thing I wonder, you know, I'd, I'd like to see them play against a couple of different kinds of lines. You know, I mean, Central Catholic has some big players, but it seems like they're really slow off the ball. Uh-huh. You know, and, and uh, I don't care how big you are, if you're slow off the ball, it doesn't make any difference. You know, and, and, I, and it seems to me like some of the Central Catholic linemen, you know, there, there's a difference between being big and strong and big and fat. Uh -huh. And I think some of the Central Catholic linemen fall into the big and fat category. You know what I mean? They're just slow and, and ponderous. Most of the weight that they have there is a high percentage of body fat rather than it is, you know, good strong muscle. And, and I'd like to see Chardon take on a couple of other teams, you know, before I could make that kind of a judgment. But I do think they have a good football team, John. I, can see, I, I think I can see that already. And there's a patterny. And O'Patterny fights that. his way and it's down to the goal line. Look he might have gotten in. Boy, it's really close. They're going to mark it just short of the goal line. Are they really? I thought he mm -hmm. made it. Me, me must have hit while he was churning. They're going to say that he he uh, hit down with the ball. There you see it, a few inches away from the goal line. It'll be third and goal for Chardon, just inches away from another score. I'll tell you, O'Patterny must have uh, his sights on winning score. Ohio scoring title because he really worked to get that ball in the end zone. He sure did. Really was sealed up and he just kept the legs moving, driving to try to get in. Our lovely assistant here, Miss Faith, is really having the time of her life here, laughing at these two old clowns who are calling this game. Right? And there's the give to O'Patterny, and O'Patterny gets a second chance and he goes right in there. And I assume, so a... playing off my statement, I assume Coach Doyle wants him to get the scoring title because he immediately called the Patterny's number to get him to six points. Was that sure. third touchdown by uh, Patterny? Or? Yeah, it is. It is. That's three for Jim O'Patterny, and it's 27-7 Chardon. 7.54 to play here in the third quarter, and we're going to see Chuck Straczynski come on for another extra point attempt. That's a... It's an amazing display. 
I'll tell you, that's offensive line. One thing I will say in their defense, I've been trying to evaluate them, they do get off the ball quick. Quick shooting out as a unit. Snap is down. Chuck Straczynski's kick is straight and true. We have a timeout on the field. A beautifully orchestrated drive by the Hilltoppers of Chardon. Seven minutes, 54 seconds to play in the third quarter. It's Chardon 28. At Cleveland Central Catholic 7. And we'll be back with more action after this timeout. Destination Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers still ring proud and true and are congruent with the progress of the present. Walk along its granite-girdled coast and enjoy its quiet fishing villages. New England. Taste its vitality and revel in its peace. First and ten, George Zero to throw again down the sideline. It is out of the outstretched arms of Damon Cross. Damon Cross, the big offensive threat for Cleveland Central Catholic, has been very, very quiet this evening, and it'll be second and ten. I'll tell you, that was nice pass coverage by Dave Scanlon on that particular play. The linebacker moving out in the flat area, picking him up and taking him a little deeper than he normally should, but... Uh, there was nobody else to pick him up. Real fine pass coverage by the first-year starter, a junior, junior uh, linebacker. It'll be second and ten for Cleveland Central Catholic as the Ironmen break the huddle. Wide to the right comes Dave Gridzinski, and George Zero doesn't like what he sees out there, and he's going to take a timeout. So we have timeout on the field. Seven minutes, 19 seconds to play here in the third quarter. With our score, Chardon 28, Cleveland Central Catholic 7. We'll be back after this timeout. Hello, I'm Warren Babcock. Things have changed since 1931 when my dad and granddad started selling Chrysler products. Junction Auto and Joga County have changed also. And our cars have changed tremendously. Hi, I'm Ed Babcock. One thing has not changed. Our commitment to give you the best deal and the best possible service as strong now as ever. As we start our 55th year, please meet the people who work hard with pride to handle all of your car needs. Parts are 15,000 factory authorized and high performance parts. Service, our award winning service department is waiting to serve you. Body Shop, we hope you don't, but if you do, our Body Shop can make it new. Salesmen, our courteous and professional salesmen will help you make the right choice. Office, on the phones and behind the scenes, our office staff pulls it all together. Most importantly, we want to thank you, our customers, for helping us grow. You're number one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, out of the timeout, out of the midst of the confusion, with 7.19 to play here in the third quarter, George Zero once again rolling to his right to throw under heavy pressure, yeah. fires up the sideline, and a pretty catch out there by Mark Gallo, the co-captain, across the 45 out to the 49-yard line, and he has a first down. That was... Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. I was going to say that was a very fine catch by Gallo. That ball was pretty well shoved down his throat. It was thrown on a rope, jammed him because he was twisted around to catch it. A real good job of our receiving. That's strange. We hadn't seen Gallo yet. I don't really recall him carrying the ball very much on that fullback right. position. Do you, Joe? No, no. He's, he's carried the ball very little. Uh, they're nice going to pick choice. up the flag. We yeah, were about to tell you that the penalty right? flag had been dropped and all those wonderful things yeah. that we had been saying were going to go for naught. However, the flag has been picked up. The play will stand, and Central Catholic will have the ball. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. Well, 
might have been a case where the referee kind of used the rag to warm his hands and end up dropping it because it's chilly down here tonight. Yeah. Sure is. For this early in the year, I'm a little surprised at the weather. First and 10 of the 46. Rolling to his left is George Zero. Fires it out in the flat and then it drops. Oh, a terrible drop out there by Damon Cross. That throw was right on the money. Cross was wide open and he should have had that ball. Second and 10. Yeah, that really was a bad drop. A fine pass by quarterback Zero. Uh, I just don't fully understand the reasoning for using the play action rollouts right now. It kind of a reach a situation where uh, Central Catholic needs the passing big play offense. Uh, they're not really going to fool anybody by freezing a linebacker. It would be an automatic drop, I would think, at this stage of the game. Second down and 10 at the 45-yard line. Wide to the right for Central Catholic comes uh, number 44, Dave Lasecki, the captain. Rolling to his left is George Zero, and he fires it out in the flat, and it's overthrown, intended for a wide-open gallo at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down. I'll tell you, he did have an open man way deep. Sean Fagan was running a post pattern along the sideline, cut it into the middle, and that was an opportunity where, again, isolated, got to see uh, where, uh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Fred Kyle, I'm sorry. Fred Kyle had coverage, and he was running man-to-man, -man, step to with step with him. Uh, very good coverage by the safety man for Chardon tonight. Third and 10 for Cleveland Central Catholic. Hightailing it out to the left is Dave Grudzinski. Wide to the right is Lasecki. Zero to throw under heavy pressure. He tries to dump it over the middle, and there was nobody to dump it to. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. And uh, actually, well, they couldn't have called it an illegal pass, really. There was nothing illegal about it. That was just the old shovel pass. Yep. <laughs> that's right. You know, or what do they call that, the Utah pass? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was... the, the Lee Gross Cup special, that's is that right. what it is? That's right. Yeah, that's a... I tell you, that was good. That shows experienced quarterback, because he was on his way to going down, would have lost 10 yards, ended up by just uh, throwing it out there. It was safe. There was no shard man around to pick it off. So uh, picked up 10 yards in that play, basically. Some quick thinking out there, too. And once again, a punt by Edge, and it is a high short kick. And a fair catch is called for down there by Bob Sotka. It'll be first and 10 for Chardon. And we'll place the ball at the 28-yard line. That's where Chardon will take over first and 10 at the Chardon 28. Sean Edge again with another short kick. That one, 27 yards with no return. 6.14 to play here in quarter number three. Chardon High School. We'll remind you, of course, as I said, you're seeing this game on Tuesday. But remember, the rest of the season, it's Monday nights at 7, right before Monday night football, so you can catch us before Monday night football. Monday nights at 7, CBC action here on Cablevision Channel 9. And they give us a Jim O'Pattern, and there he goes. He has one man to beat. Well, actually, he's beating everybody. He's going to oh, outdistance God. everyone by yards. What a, That's game. No, yeah. what a game. That's no track meet there. That's a stampede. Jim O'Pattern, he scores for the fourth time in the game, and the Chardon Hilltoppers lead it 34 to 7. I'll tell you, Jim O'Pattern is just having a tremendous game tonight. Again, the blocking, the hole was there, and then it's O'Pattern just putting his patented moves out. Patented, I'm sorry, there should be a patent on some of the moves. He has moves that pros don't make right now. Uh, doing a gorgeous job of running. I did notice, and I was going to comment on. Uh, I saw one position change. Chardon changed quarterbacks. Uh, young Joyner did his work for the night. Uh, Kevin Googe came in for that one snap of center, and uh, Jim O'Patterny showed it doesn't matter who gives him the ball, he can run with it. You got that right. And now Kevin Googe will hold for Chuck Straczynski's extra point attempt, and we have flags flying. Kick would have been good, but it won't count. There are flags and flags and flags out on that field. Hey, one thing I noticed... It's going to be an offside oh, against Central Catholic. One thing I do notice about Stravinsky, comparing him to Bacchus of last year, he seems, I don't know if he shortens up a step or if he's just quicker steps or what, but he seems to get to the ball a lot quicker, which puts a lot of pressure on a holder where you've got to get it spotted because he gets that ball uh, off real, real quick. 
He sure does. I tell you what, man, Six minutes game exactly game. to play here in the third quarter. Chuck Straczynski will try to make it a 28-point lead. The ball is down. The kick is straight and true. It might not have been, but it was good anyway. <laughs> and we have timeout on the field. Six minutes to play here in the third quarter with our score. The Chardon Hilltoppers 35 and Cleveland Central Catholic 7. Yeah, I'll tell you, Joe, we better be at our look out here for announcing players because I I think Chardon should be watering down the off or the line quite a bit where well, we should see a lot of new faces new numbers out there and we sure do want to note all the new players on the field so we have to be sharp with our, our rosters here to pick up everybody to give them the opportunity to have their name mentioned on the air yep and uh, we'll have plenty of time to do that we've got another 18 minutes to play in this ball game and it's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be an interesting season. My personal preseason pick for CBC champion is Kenston, John. That's that's a weird consensus on that, Joe. I, I think that's the team to beat. And anyway, Vernon Bentley returns this kickoff out to about the 24-yard line. You know, Kenston had some really fine young players last year. And a lot of sophomores, you know, Ken McClinic, their outstanding running back. Judah Herman, marvelous linebacker, a man who may very well develop into Division I college material. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one of the uh, few players in this area, really, who has that kind of distinction, I'd say. And uh, a, a lot of other uh, outstanding players. Of course, they lost a fine quarterback in David Duras, but they have a very, very deep ball club. If they get some consistency at the quarterback position, that's going to be very, very rough for anybody in the Chagrin Valley Conference to defeat them, and I'd say they'd have a good chance of going to the computer playoffs, too. Mm -hmm. First and ten for Cleveland Central Catholic and George Zero rolling to his right, looking downfield deep, Ooh. and it is overthrown, intended for Ron Barron. It'll be second down and ten. Well, I tell you, he was wide open, too. Uh, the man who had coverage, which is a little strange, was number 57, John Perko, on that way, way downfield for a linebacker to be covering. Now, it's, it's odd that he should be the one that should be with the deep man. You know, the one thing that Chardon has done tonight that impresses me, John, is that they've been very, very disciplined in their zone defense. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But there's been tremendous discipline there. Everybody plays their area. Let's face it, you know, a zone defense, the concept is to play an area, not to play a man. And you know, if you if, if you leave your area or move out of your area of responsibility, you screw up the whole defense. And they haven't done that. They've been almost perfect out there in the way that they have uh, played their zone. Zero's pass downfield again, incomplete. Overthrown, intended for Dave Lasecki. It'll be third down. You know, something I predicted with the score now, 35 to 7. I'm looking out here. I really don't see any different numbers out there. That's a starting defensive unit for Chardon on the field, which at this point in the game is just a little bit surprising. I'm surprised more guys who have gone through the two-a-day drills and all don't get their opportunity to get a few licks in right now. It's possible maybe that they're waiting until the beginning of the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, I mean, just to make sure that Central Catholic, say, doesn't get a quick score or something and get some momentum. You know, a lot of things can happen fast in the football game. Yeah, but you always That's have a... the opportunity to put the starters back in. I mean, once you leave the game doesn't mean you're relegated like in baseball, a pitcher. You have to go to the bench, and that's the end of your uh, work for the day. You can always bring them back, and, uh, you know, a quick touchdown will still leave you with 21-point margin, which is uh, not anything to be concerned about. I'd say Chardon has this game extremely well in control right now. Once again, the flags are flying, and we have a timeout down on the field. And, you know, John, I'll tell you, it really is in incredible. You know, the thing that's incredible to me about this game is that Chardon has come out you know, you're talking about a team that has only had two scrimmages. You know, it's had no games before tonight. And they've come out and played some really, really sharp football, both That's on right. offense and defense. And they've executed exceptionally well. They have executed the way that you would expect a team to execute in midseason right here in their very first That's game. right. Essentially air-free, too. I can... Uh 
I'll, I'll give the benefit of doubt to there's two penalties on Charting. I only seriously think of one, but uh, it seems like there's got to be at least two. It's uh, That's strange. Like you said, Joe, uh, they're playing midseason form right now in an opener. So they're a well-conditioned, well-trained team. Coach Doyle's done a good job in his two-a-day drill. I'll tell you, to have this kind of a situation, this game, uh, that a game this early in the season, it's just incredible. And pass from zero is complete out there to Damon Cross. And Cross may have picked up enough for the first down. Depends on where they spot the ball. And from the spot that it looks like they're giving him, it is a first down. And they will give him the first down without the benefit of the measurement. So it's first and ten for the Ironman of Central Catholic at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Ken Fox put a nice hit on him after he received the ball. Seems like Chardon is almost playing a prevent defense now. They're giving him a little more room, you know, uh, counting, I guess, essentially on their uh, defensive line, which has played outstandingly tonight, on putting the pressure on where they can give that little flex room. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Clock running 444 to play here in the third quarter. Zero to throw. Dumps it across the middle, and it is wide and incomplete. Intended once again for Damon Cross. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, this is a... Chardon's doing a good thing. I like some of the pass patterns that uh, Central Catholic is running, though. They're free in zone, sending man out, dropping people underneath, you know, where you got a cleared out area. And they're, they're running some nice patterns, but uh, just not be able to get the hook up between the quarterback and the receiver right now. And they need a little more than five yard gains. Even this early in the game with 16 minutes left, the uh, clock is still running way against them. There seems to be a tremendous lack of coordination in the Central Catholic offense. There's a give to Damon Cross, and he's out to about the 42. A gain of two, it'll be second and eight, or third and eight, rather. Yeah, it was a nice reaction on the Chardon defensive part. It's been pass, 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 pass. All of a sudden, they hit with a running play, and Chardon was up to it, met it, and like Joe said, just a two-yard gain on the particular play. Third down and eight for Central Catholic. Clock running, just over four minutes to play here in the third quarter. It's been all Chardon, the Hilltoppers, after giving up an early touchdown lead of 35 to seven. In the slot right is Dave Secchi, rolling to his left is zero. Zero to throw, fires, and it is intercepted. It's intercepted down there by Dave Scanlon at the 45-yard line, and Chardon will take over. So we have timeout on the field, 3.52 to play here in the third quarter with our score, Chardon 35, Cleveland Central Catholic 7. We'll be back after this timeout. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club. It's the only place in town where workouts are fun. Join our aerobics and dance classes. Play racquetball with a friend or in a league on your choice of eight thermostatically controlled courts. At Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, our trained staff will guide you through Nautilus and isokinetic exercise equipment and will develop a personalized toning and conditioning program just for you. Don't have the time to get a conventional tan? Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club invites you to experience our private tanning center. It's the quick convenient way towards looking your best and mom and dad bring the young ones along while you're relaxing after a workout in our comfortable lounge area your child is receiving the best care in our supervised nursery coming soon to the geography fitness and racket club is an indoor pool for year-round swimming so join our new swim club and the rest of our facilities before september 30th and save a hundred dollars off the regular membership rates geography fitness and racket club the fun way to stay in shape the Century 21 On the Square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 On the Square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 On the Square Realty today. First and 10 at the 45-yard line, and once again, getting some reserves into the ball game. Kevin Goodge, a quarterback, replacing the sophomore, Howard Joyner, who played a fine ball game, I thought, for the Chardon Hilltoppers. A gain of about four. Mike Lynn carrying the ball. It'll be second down and six. Yeah, I noted uh, Brian Straczynski, Chuck's uh, brother, is getting some action at the guard position on that. Would try to fig figure out and put in... Uh, 
who the replacements are as they come. Second down and six for the Hilltoppers. Ball at the 45-yard line. Kevin Goodge pitches it out to Scalaris. Scalaris to the 47-yard line, a gain of about two, and it'll bring up third and four. So Bill Phelan is in at uh, another guard position. That's another new player on the field. You're able to pick up. I tell you, these short jerseys are tough for picking up numbers. You got the, the darker red background on the yeah, black, and, it and it's really... Fades the numbers, the red numbers sort of fade into the black background, and it's like looking at a collage. That's sorts. right. And and plus, uh, it doesn't, doesn't help any play being right in front of us where we don't have an angle either. <laughs> That's true. Third down and about four. And again, the give is to Scalaris, and he's to the 45-yard line. He picked up about three on the play. It'll be fourth down, and I would think that the Hilltoppers would punt in this situation here with just under two minutes to play and a half. It's fourth down and one. Yeah, I'm surprised to see O'Patterny still in the game. Seriously, at this point, I would definitely rest him. He's, uh, he's your workhorse. He's your main running back. He's going to be all season long. You got him in a game right now where... Uh, Pretty much you're looking at the possibility of an injury happening just from the fact of uh, him being out there. Why play him if you don't need him? Fourth and one for Chardon. There's the give, and that is, uh, who was that, Scalaris. He did not pick up the first down. Central Catholic threw him back. They take over on downs. 124 to play here in the third quarter with our score. Chardon 35, Central Catholic 7. Uh, I think they, I'm positive they're short. No, we'll have to wait. We're going to have to have a measurement here. Yeah. So hold off there, and all the other stuff that's going on here, guys. We're going to have a measurement. I seriously I, thought he stopped them. I think they're short. I'm okay. almost positive that they are short. I think Chardon might have got a good spotting to make it closer than it should be, because I seriously didn't think he came close. They got it. They gave him the first down. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's anyway, it. guys, we're going to take a timeout right here. 124 to play in the third quarter, 35-7. We'll be back. Destination Travel invites you to enjoy autumn in New England, the birthplace of our nation's proud heritage. One feels an ancestral calling back to this majestic place. Come to a land where the vestiges of Americana give its visitors rare insight into our nation's past. Where the lessons of our forefathers still ring proud and true and are congruent with the progress of the present. Walk along its granite girdled coast and enjoy its quiet fishing villages. New England. Taste its vitality and revel in its peace. 35-7, Chardon, the clock is running. One minute and five seconds to play here in the third quarter. And once again, the give over the left side comes to Mike Lynn, at least that's who it looks like, number 23. And I imagine, yeah, now I find out it's number 20. That's Scolaris, not Mike Lynn, Mike Scolaris. And the gain of three, it'll be second down and about seven. I keep looking for number changes, and uh, there doesn't seem to be that many right now. As a matter of fact, I'm not really watching the game as much as I am watching jersey numbers. It's true. It's about the same thing here, John. Second down and seven for the Chardon Hilltoppers under the direction of Kevin Goodge, and he gives the ball to Lynn. 35 30, 25. Mike Lynn is all the way down to the 20-yard line, and he has another Chardon Hilltopper first down. I tell you, this started out being an entertaining game. Uh, at this time, it's just so one-sided, uh, pretty much waiting for it to end, quite seriously. You're talking Laffer City here now. It's first and 10 for Chardon at the 20, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. The third quarter has come to an end here in Chardon with our score. The Hilltoppers of Chardon, 35. The Ironmen of Central Catholic, 7. 
Wilbur action here, and what turned out to be a very exciting ball game has turned into a laugher. It's 35 to 7 in favor of Chardon as we start the fourth quarter, and the Hilltoppers are on the march again. Here's the give on the crossing play over the middle to Scalaris. He's down to the 15 yard line, a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. I'm still on a number search, Joe. <laughs> and all I keep coming up with is the same one. Maybe I ought to just get back into watching the game rather than hunting for this. No, it looked like a couple new ones came into the lineup here. I think Mike Vaughn just entered the field to play at the end position. It'll be second down and five yards to go for the Hilltoppers of Chardon. That is Mike Vaughn out there, number 86, I believe. And Goods pitches the ball to Scalaris. Scalaris down inside the 10 to about the nine yard line. And I believe that he picked up enough for a Chardon first down. He's very, very close to it. Run out of bounds by number 11, Greg Antoon. It'll be a first and goal for Chardon. We got it. First and goal for Chardon just inside the 10-yard line of Central Catholic. I see number 85, Steve Wilson, is in the game. I'm sure right now one of Coach Doyle's objectives would be to get Mike Scleris into the end zone. To my knowledge, he didn't have the opportunity to score last year. You want to get that underneath the belt of a running back you're going to be using season long, and I'm sure we're going to see Mike Scolaris here on in. Absolutely. And uh, I believe we saw Mike Scolaris again that time. He didn't get much. In fact, he may have lost a yard. No, that was Mike Lynn. Uh-huh. And it'll be second and goal back around the 10-yard line. Well, come to think of it, I'm not sure if Mike Lynn has a score. Mike Lynn, of course, joined the team sort of late last year he was a transfer from lake catholic and I, if i recall correctly he was ineligible for the first three or four games of the season i believe you're and, right and Joe. joined uh, and joined the team late so consequently even though he made a a contribution you know he was a little bit behind everybody else because he didn't have the the full season to get ready there so mm -hmm. it, they'd like to get him some extra work too i'm sure Kevin Goods gives the ball in the cross and play to Scalaris. Well, he's got the his five. six. He's going to get his touchdown. There you go. Mike Scalaris on a 10-yard run makes it 41-7 in favor of the Chardon Hilltoppers. 10-25 to play here in the ball game. It's kind of fun making a statement like that where you want to go and you see it come true. Yeah, it's like you're saying, you know, hey, let's get that guy in the end zone and... There he goes, right into the end zone. Yeah, one thing about Mike Lynn last year, you said he was behind as far as time and all. Another important consideration there is he was behind Dale Backus also. Absolutely. You know, which was a fine, fine fullback, so that accounts for a reason why he didn't get as much playing time. But he also had to learn the offense, too, and there's a lot of, you know, every time you have, you change coaches, you have changes in terminology and a lot of other things. Uh, and a fumbled snap there on the extra point attempt okay. renders it useless as Straczynski is not even able to get the ball into the air. Okay. We have timeout on the field. <laughs> 10 minutes and 25 seconds to play here in the ball game at Chardon, Ohio. Our score, the Chardon Hilltoppers 41, the Cleveland Central Catholic Ironmen 7 will be back after this timeout. The Century 21 On The Square professionals are dedicated to helping people sell their land, home, or business in Geauga County. Sellers working with us receive our action warranty, assuring the seller of a high standard of service. At Century 21 On The Square, sellers receive maximum marketing exposure through our computer network service, which reaches into a large buyer's market, and advertisements in area newspapers and real estate publications. To guarantee your satisfaction, call Century 21 On The Square Realty today. Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club. It's the only place in town where workouts are fun. Join our aerobics and dance classes. Play racquetball with a friend or in a league on your choice of eight thermostatically controlled courts. At Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club, our trained staff will guide you through Nautilus and isokinetic exercise equipment and will develop a personalized toning and conditioning program just for you. Don't have the time to get a conventional tan? Geauga Fitness and Racquet Club invites you to experience our private tanning center. It's the quick convenient way towards looking your best and mom and dad bring the young ones along while you're relaxing after a workout in our comfortable lounge area your child is receiving the best care in our supervised nursery coming soon to the geography fitness and racket club